Hi everyone, in this video I'm gonna describe how to connect to Azure SQL DB uh, via SSH tunneling. Before we do that, let's discuss uh, the need for this. Why do we need to do this? So um, in, in Azure, so in, in this green bubble, I'm gonna call this Azure. You have here a VNet that is hosting one of your machines this vnet has um, one machine and then there is another subnet inside the same vnet that has a firewall and we have here um, a service endpoint that is connecting this vnet to azure sql db that means the traffic will go from your virtual machine to the firewall we did this routing already and i showed this in a previous video you have routing that takes any traffic from the from this subnet, send it to the other subnet that has the virtual network, the virtual the firewall, sorry, and the firewall will take the, the traffic to the Azure SQL DB through this endpoint. So the Azure SQL DB should see only the traffic coming from the IP of the firewall, and since this is coming through the service endpoint, then the firewall will be. Uh, using its uh, private IP, not the public IP. Okay, so this traffic is secured, network security uh, is maintained, everything is isolated. Now let's speak about the on-prem part. If you have um, a connection between your um, VNet and on-prem, typically this can be um, an express route. And if you have only private peering in your express route, you cannot reach through your express route connection, the Azure SQL, SQL DB directly. You have to go to the VNet. So only the, your machine on-prem can reach out to a machine in Azure as long as this is inside a, a virtual network, which is of course a must for any virtual machine in Azure. But the traffic by default will not go directly to the Azure SQL DB. Now, if in, in some cases where the customer does not have any uh, Microsoft peering in the express route and the only connection that they have is private private peering uh, or sometimes when there's no express route but we have VPN connection between your on-prem and the gateway and that's actually what I did in, in my environment to test this uh, then you need to have a jump box uh, a machine so the traffic should go from your on-prem to this jump box and the jump box should be able to take this traffic and route it back to the network and in this case we will do this through SSS uh, sorry SSH tunneling so SSH tunneling is a technique uh, that is used mainly in, in Linux and Unix systems but uh, in this case I, I did this simulation using a Windows machine and Putty and uh, the traffic would be I'm going to open the uh, the SSH session with the, with the uh, routing, with the tunneling, and we'll see how the tunneling is working as long as my session is open in this case. I wouldn't recommend this to be a permanent solution, but it can be for testing, it can be for a, as a temporary solution in case we don't have... <clears throat> uh, uh, Microsoft peering and your your security team is insisting to take the traffic through your express route So let's see in the demo. How can we do this? So in this demo, I'm gonna uh, Show you how I did the SSH tunneling. I'm gonna first describe what I did in, in my network So I have a VNet here. This is simulation for your on-prem and in this VNet I have uh, a gateway virtual network gateway attached to it so in our subnets we have a sub, uh, gateway subnet and in this gateway subnet we have the gateway let me go to the gateway here the on-prem gateway and in the connections i see there is a connection from the hub network inside Azure to my on-prem and from my on-prem to the hub both of them are, wrong, are working and are functional in, in my network the address space is 172.16.00 
in the hub network the address space here is 10.15.00 it has multiple subnets default that has all my virtual machines the gateway subnet that has the, the gateway to connect to the on-prem and I have another one the Azure firewall subnet as well and I'm using the Azure firewall uh, to take the traffic from my network outside to the Azure SQL DB so to do this I have to have routing so I have a routing table if I go to the default I see a, a routing cable called uh, hub routing and if I check this routing table I see only one route that takes everything that's going to the uh, internet to my private IP for my uh, firewall. In the firewall, I have the, the rules. <coughs> I set up the rules already to send this to the uh, Azure SQL DB. Now, the Azure SQL DB itself, let me show you the firewall configurations. It only accepts the traffic from uh, the uh, the subnet for the Azure firewall through the service endpoint. That means my on-prem virtual machine cannot directly access the Azure SQL DB with this configuration, that the connection will not be uh, successful. And I have to take my traffic to the, uh, the, the, subnet, the firewall subnet and then the, sub, the firewall subnet will take it out. So how can we do this? Uh, I showed you the Azure part in the configurations. I have a machine here. The I have the on-prem VM. I'm going to use it in a moment. But I have the SQL DB one. That it's a Windows machine that has um, nothing but the, the SSH server on it. Uh, in networking, I made sure to have the uh, port 1433 open because the SQL traffic will go by default to port 1433. Uh, I have SSH port open. I didn't test with and without it because I'm, I'm creating an SSH connection from inside the machine itself. So there is no need to have this in the NSG. And, but in case I, I made this uh, open, and in the machine, let's go to the machine. This is 10.15.1.5. This is the, uh, uh, the machine I'm using for the tunneling. That's the, uh, the, the box. And of course, I have to open the port. So I open the SQL port in the uh, Windows firewall. Windows firewall, as you know, is open by default <clears throat> and in this case let me test before I open the connection and after I open the connection before I open the connection I, I will go to my on-prem machine and I use the, the Azure SQL DB server and I try to connect and the connection will take some time and then will not succeed uh, see here, I'm using the the name of the Azure SQL DB. However, this name is is not actually uh, translated to the Azure SQL DB real IP. If I open my a note here, I will show you the host file. So inside any Windows machine in the Windows folder, System32, Drivers, ETC, I have a file called Hosts. It doesn't have any uh, extension. And in this file, you can use it for uh, creating your own like private DNS for this machine. Whatever you are adding here will override the DNS connection that you are, the DNS server configuration that you are having in your environment. Of course, in um, in, in your on-prem, like real on-prem enterprise, you need to have this added to your DNS server locally. So I'm saying that the when <clears throat> when a client is asking for this URL or this host, translate this to the this IP. 10.15.1.5 is the IP for my, as, as we expecting here, 
the connection did not succeed and 10.15.1.5 this is the jump box that I'm using for routing the traffic to Azure SQL DB uh, you have to have the DNS uh, trick here because Azure SQL DB if I use the, the IP the Azure SQL DB will check what server that you used and if the server is an IP that does not belong to Azure SQL DB itself, it will refuse the connection, will give you login, the login failure. So you have to use the same name of your Azure SQL DB. Um, so I'm gonna go to my connection here and let me open Putty. I'm connecting to my local host. So I, I, I installed it. So Windows component now you go to um, here. and optional features and you add a feature and you add the feature that we are adding is the OpenSH server. Open, uh, OpenSH client is installed by default. I'm using Windows uh, 2019. I'm installing here OpenSH server and I'm connecting to this server. I'm using Putty in this case, but you can use the command line SSH in Windows, the latest version, it has OpenSSH uh, already installed. You can do this in Linux as well. Uh, what I, I did here differently in the SSH configurations, I go to tunnels and I will add uh, in this source port, I should add 1433. It's a local, so it's a, it's a, an open. I'm opening right now a local port on my machine, which is 1433, and the destination for this one will go to my uh, SQL DB server name and to the port 1433. That will go, and um, I just need to add these. I want to click add. You'll see them here. It's a local. You add the destination colon the, the port, and here you go. Now, since I added all these, all what I need right now is just to open the connection. The connection will ask me for my username and password. I logged in right now, and that's all what I need. As long as this connection is open, my connection uh, to the Azure SQL DB from the on-prem machine should, should succeed. So I'm gonna minimize the, the jump box. I'll try again, connect. And here you go. If I use my store procedure that I used in the previous demos, uh, who is connected? Connect again here, and I can see everything is going from my uh, private IP for the Azure firewall. Uh, if you are trying to do this without certain configurations um, in the Azure SQL DB, that will fail. And this configuration related to how SQL DB is accepting the request and uh, redirecting your request. Let me show you this in, in the diagram. In this diagram, I'm showing you the diagram from the, the SQL DB documentation, and uh, you can search this. I think the article name is Azure SQL Connectivity Architecture. This is true for both SQL DB and Data Warehouse. So, how it works when your machine is connecting <coughs> to SQL DB, there is a layer here, the gateway layer, that will accept your request first on port 1433 and then will send you back. The, the the SQL server that you are having or the host that you are that you should connect to with a different port. Once the client will take this, will try to connect directly to this port. This is done to speed up the uh, the authentication and subsequent uh, connections for the Azure SQL DB. This is the default whenever you are inside Azure. So inside Azure, this is the way to do this because the, the connectivity is not expected to be uh, broken because of firewall or something like this. If you are connecting from outside Azure, then the gateway will take your connection and will connect you to the Azure SQL DB. You are always going through a gateway. It will be a little bit slower as you are expecting because you always have to go through the gateway, but this is more friendly with the, um, the firewalls. In our case, because we are doing this through the tunnel, by default, our tunnel inside, so the, the tunneling machine or the, the jump, jump box 
is inside Azure. So this is the default behavior, and this will make the connection broken. Uh, so we need to change from the default behavior to the proxy behavior. So this behavior is called the proxy uh, setup. And the documentation is straightforward. You need just what you need to do is to use PowerShell. You get the SQL Server uh, virtual, the Visual SQL Server uh, ID. You build the URI, and then you get the property called uh, connection type, and then change this connection type to proxy. Once you do this on the Azure SQL DB Virtual Server, then your connection uh, should be successful, uh, as as it did with me. Um, that was a, a very quick video. I hope that was beneficial and that will close the series of the Azure SQL DB network security. I will post all the links for the other videos in this video as well. Uh, let me know. I will try to post my contacts at least on Twitter. Uh, so reach out to me if you have any further questions regarding this. Thank you.